brews and banter. Hi, Frank. Hey, Rowan. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm happy for our special episode. Yeah, we're very excited about this. We, um, we planned this out. Now it's happening for our 50th, for our 50th episode. 50th episode? Uh, um, in great New party. Orleans? Yep. New Orleans. Um, had a great time. We've done a lot of fun stuff here. We'll talk about it. But um, before we get into all this, let's start with the beer. Yeah, well, this is, this is the beer we're going to start with now. It's not the beer we started today off with. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a, a Lagerland Lager from Ecology Beer Creative. It's 5.7 ABV, 10 IBU. Uh, Which means it's not very bitter, Roman. Ten is not very bit no, bitter. No. Premium North American Lager. What the fuck is wrong with me? <laughs> made for New Orleans. I'm gonna pour this for you because I'm gonna. There's be not a much bit. information about the beer. Look at. I think you get better glasses than me. Yeah. Well, your first one was practice. Well, look at the difference. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. Look. Look at mine. <laughs> Uh -huh. <laughs> That's fucking great. That's I, would the same liked, every... I would have liked a little head on this one. <laughs> well, you play your cards right, I can take care of that for you. <laughs> so yeah, we wanted to do our 50th episode in a party city. What greater, what greater party city than New Orleans? So New Orleans. We've, uh, Is it New Orleans uh -huh. or New Orleans? Uh -huh. Or New Orleans? Yes. <laughs> it's all of that. I don't really know... I mean, if you're from here and, and, and you say it the wrong way, they'll let you know. But people like us, they probably don't give a shit about it. Nobody has corrected me yet. The, the, well, the tours. Super nice people, by the way, right? Yeah, very nice. So all the people in New Orleans we've met so far, Bourbon Street, all these places we've gone, are good yeah. people. But even Patrick here at, at um, Ecology Beer Creative. Um, so this is, a, this is a lager we'll start off with. They, um, Cheers. And a crowler, so looks like pee. Look at the difference. <laughs> it's pretty good. This is good. It's um, it's different to have this after the Hellas that I had. Yeah, and, and I had um, Oktoberfest. Yeah, margin. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, this is a new place just just opened up. So this is just down the street from us. Um, really nice location. We'll. We'll post some pictures. They have a really nice back uh, backyard. It's got palm trees, lighting, sitting, music. It's a really beautiful yard in the back. So we'll we'll post those pictures as well. But a little a little bit about them. Everything begins with a story. A story may be read by Dave Grohl, Flea, or Jeff Tweedy in a kick-ass book highlighting some thrilling, crazy life altering journey. Our story would be as grand as the inf influencing tales from rock bands that open our ears to the bands like the... Dave Grohl was Foo Fighters. <laughs> well, this is Ramones. Yep. Or Romans. <laughs> 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 Te uh, television and Lazy Last Lester. Or maybe uh, tales from the pen of Samuel Clemens or Hemingway as the Key West breeze gently ruffled the curtains in the sea salt air. An adventure so insane that even we can't believe it be true. However exciting that may sound, we may just have to keep it simple and skip the rock and roll and traveling tales, but that won't stop us from imagining them telling our story. So there's more much longer description of this brewery. A little background, it used to be another brewery, I forgot the name, Patrick said. Yeah, um, just prior to COVID and they shut yeah, down. Yeah, they shut down and then they, they bought it. Mm -hmm. The owner is from Detroit, but mm -hmm. has been here for f over 15 years. Mm -hmm. um, so because it used to be a brewery, kind of helped them out not to have to do great area really really yeah. what appears to be pretty safe for us i mean it's um people are walking around there doesn't seem to, i mean we're 
probably 15 minutes from Bourbon Street, right? Yeah, driving. Yeah. So, yeah. You know, it's uh, but either way, it's a nice, nice location and um, definitely a place we'll come back to and for sure. I, th- you know? I think where we are, this is also a, a developing area and they're the only brewery within this neighborhood that's right. developing. Yep. So that's a good start. Yeah, for just off well. of St. Charles. Yeah. And they opened in October, so a relatively new, new brewery. And that's, that's perfect for us because we like the, uh, the newbies. Yes. <laughs> Which reminds me, there's a, there's a new brewery in our town we have to visit. Well, there's a couple of them. There's um, Van Hassler. That's the one I'm thinking. Okay, but then there's another one that uh, the one brewery shut down in Camillus and another brewery from Cortland, or I'm not sorry, yeah, shut down in uh, Cicero. And a new, and a new brewery from uh, Cortland has moved into that location. Check that one out yep, too. Yep, But also, I mean, so this beer is pretty good, but you guys want to have a good time. Try drinking and going on a powerboat. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we're kind of pink. Yeah, we went on... Um, were they called airboats? What, they call it a powerboat? Yeah, you call it a yeah, powerboat. I've boat. already had a lot of beer, so. <laughs> Fuck, you see, you're, I can't you're... go one episode. First of all, I'll swear and I'll make a mistake. <laughs> you're powering through that beer. I'm going to power, yeah. Oh, I, oh, I had to confirm it was a motorboat. <laughs> we went on air, I think they called it's it It's an airboat, boats. yeah. We went on airboats, um, went through marshes and, and swamp lands, and uh, canals and... Um, bayous. Bayous. Uh, learned some interesting facts and... Saw a bunch of alligators. Yep. I mean, really up close. One of them was banging up against our boat. Yeah, it was a. There was there was one that was like, um, you know, ten or twelve feet long. Yeah, the jam pretty fat right before there. the lake. Yeah, yeah, that little fucker. So our I forgot our tour guide's name, Mike. Oh, I no, that doesn't serve very Louisiana. We kind of call him like. Dougie. Dougie. <laughs> Thanks, Dougie. Yeah. He's a great guy. Like, he was super knowledgeable, yeah. Yeah, he knew a lot. He, he told us about different species and, and really good eye on, like, finding animals. We saw bald eagles. We saw an owl. Um, yep. That was really cool. Herons. There's another bird that's black. It looks like a heron. I don't know what it was. It's like some sort of crane-looking thing, right? Yeah. <clears throat> but was this, like, two hours? Does um, this boat rise on it? Just under, maybe. Yeah. But either way. Yeah. Long enough for us to turn pink. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> it's all pink on the inside. <laughs> yeah, that was great. Our first day here. Was it first day? When did we get here? Sunday? This is your story, Rowan. Yeah. Well, when did we go to Bourbon Street? Tuesday. Tuesday? Second day. Not Monday? I thought it was Monday. No, it was Tuesday. Monday. So Monday oh, wait, we th- went yeah. to... No, it is Monday, because today is Wednesday. <laughs> I had Hellas earlier. We had something before that. Yeah, we've been drinking. Um, <laughs> yeah, Monday, Monday. Went, to, went, on, went to Bourbon Street, and there were like live bands in every bar. Yeah, we stopped at uh, uh, Crescent City first. The, I guess it's the oldest microbrewery. The oldest microbrewery in um, New Orleans. It was just really a one and done there, right? Yeah, just had a beer. What did it say? Home of the Red Horse. Red Stallion. Red Stallion. Which is also a nickname of mine. <laughs> you wish. Yeah. <laughs> also, I saw there's a restaurant. And I was going to tell you about this. It's called the Sneaky Pickle, <laughs> which would be a great porn name. Like a, <laughs> like a great title. That the would sneaky, be. I'm going to give you the Sneaky, sneaky pickle, pickle. With extra mayo. What would you get today? Sneaky Pickle. With extra mayo. <laughs> 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 but Bourbon Street, I mean, you know, some people, or a lot of people I'm sure have been here, but Bourbon Street, uh, what a great time. We, we saw, like you talked about live bands, and, mm-hmm. and um, I mean, there's, 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 there's live bands, but they play the original music, or they'll play remakes, but they put their own spin on it, and it's, um, it's just really cool to listen to, and, it's, and this, is, this is a Monday night, and it was like packed like it would be a Saturday for us, like back home. Yeah, the, we got there around, what, 7.30, Yep. And In the morning. <laughs> 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 That's when we left. Uh-huh. Um, the street got packed by like 9.30 yeah. or 10. Yeah, and it opened 24 hours. Yeah. You know. So that was my first time, but you've been there before. I've been here before for Mardi Gras. We're, we're, we purposely missed Mar- Mardi Gras. We didn't want to go to that. But yeah, I've been to Mardi Gras. It's crazy. Uh, 
It's Did you show your so boobs? Cool. Huh? Did you flash your boobs? No, no, no. I'm a nut flasher. Mm. But the beads are, you know, it's like brain costs. <laughs> 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 but it's uh no, that's your cowboy skills <laughs> <laughs> it's uh it's a good time it's um it's 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 intense as far as how many people are though so it's it's not always i mean if i was in my early 20s then it's perfectly fine for me but that's not the case anymore so i like what we do so yeah there's a lot of bands um you know live bands it's a great time uh, Bourbon Street for us at this uh, uh, on the Monday after Mardi Gras, it's probably the right speed for us and for for me anyway. I don't know, maybe you want to fucking party all night. And... No, no, no. That was <laughs> just the right tempo. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it was an early night anyway. So yeah, the bands were good. Yep. Um, I don't remember which bar we went to, but the one dude was screaming out, "Can they do this? They push buttons. We sing live." <laughs> right. Right. Um, that was good. So then after that. What did we do? We went to World War II Museum. Mm -hmm. That was amazing. Um, if you were here visiting or in town but never been to World War II Museum, definitely recommend. Oh, it's huge. Yeah. And uh, watch, watch the movies uh, that they have in theaters and then check out the displays. Uh, do a guide if you can. Um, that was awesome. Then yeah, I have nothing we've, bad to say about we've that. been eating in a lot of restaurants, oysters, Killer, the size of oysters. Yeah, like there's so much meat. They're gigantic. Yeah, um, half the price of what we pay it up north. That was delicious, but super yeah. fresh. Yeah, I like raw oysters, but you had cooked oysters, char grilled. Yeah. Have you ever had raw? No, it tastes like snot. It's like clearing your throat and swallowed it. I, I like it raw with, with mm, lemon, raw dog. lemon and hot sauce. You like a raw dog. <laughs> <laughs> I raw dog my oyster. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, we've had a lot of, all the gumbo, jambalaya, all the stuff people love. But yeah. New Orleans is known for it and uh, just um, a really good time. In, in a lot uh, of restaurants. And I guess you could just like walk around you with beer. Walk, yeah. Yeah, there's that like was, no open container law. That was, that was weird <laughs> for me. <laughs> Just walking around with beer <laughs> and, and, and drinking. Um, we did. Hunting. We saw your little buddy in the alligator suit. Yes. <laughs> this Random. guy's about 75, he's about five foot tall. Random weird people. <laughs> Wearing an alligator costume. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, you know. And then um, we did the hunted tour, right? The ghost tour, yep. The, we did the ghost tour. Uh, what was the girl's name? Our tour guide? Ariadne. 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 Yep. Yeah. Um, she has a... Funnier than fuck, too. She's, yeah. pretty, she's a good smart ass. She's, she's very artistic, um, great character, good personality, really into the, the whole ghost thing. Like, her personality kind of helps with storytelling mm -hmm. and to be more like... Um, What's the what's the Authentic. word? Authentic. Yeah. Yeah. And she also she wrote a book. Yeah, Ash Tuesday. Ash Tuesday. Yeah. Yeah. She wrote a book, so check out her book on uh, on Amazon. But someone like you think you'd want to go to the bar with this and just drink, just like, yeah, do a couple of shots and just be like, we none of us know what the fuck we're talking about right now, but we're gonna keep talking about it. <laughs> like, carry on. She gave us interesting history that was related to the whole ghost tour. Uh, she gave us a history about New Orleans and mm -hmm. and how it, you know, it became, how the city grew, how it started, what it used to be. So, yeah. Yeah, I didn't realize was, it was French, then Spanish, then back to French, and then, and then it burned down once, and then they built it back, and that's why there's some Spanish influence from the previous French mm -hmm. influence, and then... Now it went back to France before it came to the U.S. Like, just what the fuck? It's like a, yeah, like a redheaded stepchild getting traded so back. So, what, what do they call it? Um, inmate colony. Convict. Convict colony. Yep. So it was, because that's how it started. They, the, the French were taking all the convicts. Was it French or, or Spanish? I think it was the French at the beginning, right? But then the Spanish. Right, right. So in the Spanish, right? And then they needed people to populate it. Right. So the guy who was in charge was like. Do you have any people you want to send yeah. here? He goes, yeah, all the convicts. <laughs> yeah, so the guy that was in charge, that was kind of like the governor or the mayor, whatever you want to yeah. call it up north, the Spanish guy, 
he was Irish. <laughs> Number. Oh, that's his right. His name was like yeah. something O'Reilly or something like that. But it was like a Spanish name. Enrique O'Reilly or something. Or something. O'Reilly yeah. last name. Yeah. But he, uh, yeah. So then, you know, obviously these criminals don't want to work. Then he's so they come here. Was bloody O'Reilly. Yeah. Yeah. And the people, the, the convicts come here, they don't want to work. So it's all crime and, yeah. and all this stuff. So then they had to kind of clean that up somehow. But anyway, whatever it is now, you know, everybody knows about Katrina. And, and I think that's, you know, very, um, you know, fresh in people's minds. They think about it, but it's, it's the, you don't really see many of the, um, much of the carnage from that uh, now with the buildings. Uh, uh, unless the, the houses we've been seeing that are boarded up is from that. Mm -hmm. And um, we haven't really traveled too far outside of the city to, to see or get close to, we haven't been to Gulf of Mexico. No, but we were close to it on the airboat. We were, but I mean, you can't <laughs> see on the airboat what the damage was. Yeah. <laughs> it's all yeah, swamps. Right, right, right. Um, See what else? But no, it was great, and then, and then, yeah, just the food and and, and the steakhouse we ate at today. So much food. <clears throat> we, we tried po' boys. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the history of how that name came about. Yeah, what what did that? So we said uh, we've been getting a lot of Ubers. Yeah, you know, because we don't want to drink and drive. So um, the Ubers and the guy was saying, you know, what is a po' boy? We're asking what a po' boy is, and like where the name originated from. But apparently, it was you know however many years ago, you know, centuries, where it is, they were talking about how they feed the, the kids on the docks, the people, because, you know, it's a big, it was a big uh, uh, maritime. That was their economy through the Mississippi River. And uh, they want to feed the kids on the dock. And they said, oh, we got to feed these, we got to feed these po' boys, like the poor boys, but po' boys, we got to feed po these po' boys. boys. So now it's, a, it's basically a sub with like seafood on it, right? Like you can yeah, get like, breaded. Shrimp, shrimp could be chili. fish, could be chicken, could mm -hmm. be whatever. It's, just, it's, a, it's a sub sandwich, and but they're all made different. if you want it dressed, mm. it will be lettuce, tomato, mayonnaise. Mm. I like my po, <laughs> I like my po boys undressed. <laughs> Bear skin. Yeah. Raw, raw dog, those po boys. What do you think about this? Uh, it's pretty good. Yeah. It's a... I think mine's going... This I, I a, liked the Oktoberfest better. Yeah, this is, um, it's good, but it's got a, a weird, I know it's low IBU, but it's got a little bit of a, I wouldn't say it's bitterness, but a little bit of a bite at the end. Um, I don't know what that Bitter, would be called. I would say bitterness at the end. Yeah, but it's not, but it's low IBU, so maybe it is right. bitterness at the end, but I, I don't know. I mean, it was good. Um, this would not be my first choice for them. Probably the Hellas mm -hmm. would be that I had, but I I like that Oktoberfest. I could have two, three of those. Yeah, the Martin. Yeah. Yep. So um, we're gonna actually we'll grade this, and then we got we got another beer we're gonna get onto, right? Let's do it. Yeah. So uh, out of I, I mean, <laughs> again, I apologize because I, I drink. That's what we do. <laughs> I can't remember. Do we grade out of four or five? <laughs> out of five? What the oh, fuck? I don't fucking know, man. I'm tired. There's travel. I got a po boy in me. Out of five. I'm going to give this um, three and three quarters. 3.75. I'm giving this four. All right. So, so I know we don't have it here. The Hellas for me, the one that I had previously, mm -hmm. the Hellas I'd give four and a quarter. I mean, I know we don't have it to share with people here, but what would you give your Martin? Oh, that was 4.5. Yeah. So, yeah, it, it was good. I, I, yeah, you know, that I wish was we would have really tried good. that, but we couldn't get the cans. Our canning line is broke, so we had to set up for some crawlers. But I know, can't wait for time. you guys to see the facility too. I took photos. Um, yeah. The place is really nice. Yeah. I'm so looking from here forward we're, to how far they're gonna grow. From here we're gonna go on a new beer, right? Yeah. Hey, before we go into new beer, what is the difference between enzyme and the hormone? Um, I don't know that. Can't hear an enzyme. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm not answering because you already told me that joke. No, I have it. Yes, you did. Answer it. No, because see how you would I know, have to. How, how would they know the answer if you don't answer? You've already it? said it. How do I know I'm supposed to give you an answer? Because you didn't ask. You you said what's the difference? I said I don't know, and then you said that. So why would I need to answer that? Well, I said, I already know there's supposed to be an answer because you already told the joke. <laughs> no. <laughs> I said you can't hear an enzyme. Yeah, but and you can't hear a hormone. That's right. <laughs> right. I I because you said the joke before. No, I didn't. Yes, you're, you got fucking. This is my first face. time. No, it's not. 
All right, I know fine. You do. <laughs> do you know what the cheapest meat is? Fucking Roman meat, apparently. No, deer balls. They under a buck. Roman, you motherfucker. <laughs> if you weren't so far away, I, back, I backhand you. I told you that joke. No, you didn't. I did. I said, what's the difference between beer nuts and deer nuts? What's the difference between beer nuts and deer nuts? Deer nuts are under a buck. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck, man? But well, mine's a little different. <laughs> That's a little different. Okay, this, this, <laughs> this new beer. <laughs> um, this is from Gnarly Barley, right? This is... About Gnarly Barley. How about I'll just start that. It says, adopt a skateboarder. Yeah, this is... A this percentage is, of sales from this brew supports local skateboarding initiatives. Yeah, this is so, called Skater Aid. Skater Aid. Get it like Gatorade? Crisp Pilsner. Is that we? Is that we had to add? Yeah, that's <laughs> four point two. <laughs> four point two percent alcohol, and um, what is it? Generally, no, it's gnarly. Gnarly. <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> I'm still taking applications for okay. a podcast host. <laughs> Nobody's gonna want to be fucking. Podcast yeah, now they will look at this because I can fucking do it perfectly. Oh shit! No, this is good. See that? Right. I almost had to pull it back, but look at that, Roman. There you go. This is the can. I'm a fucking master at this. I can never do any wrong except for that beer before. You know what? One. We gotta be in someone's camera, otherwise people can't see us. Here, give me yours. <laughs> <Ding>. <laughs> Mm. That's pretty good. That is good. This is like a, like a little citrusy. I'll read, I'll read something really quick on here. but Yeah, read about the brewery. It's got a little citrusy thing in it, but I wanted to apologize to people for how we're kind of set up because we're, we're not obviously around the location. We don't have our lighting. We don't have our other cameras. We don't have our, our, our microphones that we normally use. I mean, we could do all this, but it's a pain in the ass to travel with it. So, I mean, this will work fine. Well, I think, if but, we were to drive somewhere, we can bring yeah, all that shit yeah. with us. But we're but using also individual cameras when now. When we're flying, we're limited on weight, on how many bags we can bring. Um, later on, when finances maybe. Once we make our first cool million. Yeah. Because <laughs> we've spent close to that already. We get a million, a few thousand, just to pay for travel. You read about the brewery, I'm going to see what else is in it. So, yeah, about gnarly barley. Originated, originated from the home of Zach and Carrie Caramanta, Gnarly Barley Brewery began in a cramped garage surrounded by two fat cats and a half pipe. <laughs> <laughs> Your half pipe is? I think that's the thing. Yeah, yeah, the, the, yeah. the skateboard. Yep. I, I can actually drop in one. What? Well, you could I, drop I, like you could fall? I've done it. Well, it's, it wasn't like a full-size half pipe. It was a sm was it a smaller half, one. Half pipe, so it'd be a quarter pipe. It was the baby half pipe. <laughs> and uh, first, I learned how to people drop call that a slide in the pool. So they have the the pools, and then I did back half pipe, but the small one. And I first couple of times I fell hard. One time I hit the back of my head. <laughs> but the trick is, where you want a skateboard? Don't try to like lean back. You got to lean in and go with it. Right, and you got to have. Uh, bend your knees for bend your knees uh, for absolutely absorption. yeah yep. no my, my friend who taught me how to surf was also a skateboarder you're a man of many fucking weird talents I I like to enjoy life well I enjoy life too but I don't fucking surf <laughs> <laughs> why are you mad at me I don't know <laughs> I was looking for a sip I was waiting to get that that phrase over I'm like oh now I can drink a beer oh. <laughs> I snow, I'm angry. I, I snowboard too. Yeah. Whatever. Not ski. I've never tried. Well, I I put skis on once and I look like a um <laughs> a newborn deer. We, yeah. We call those puppets on strings when you're like uh Yeah. I, what I, else I, is I called? Puppets on strings, yeah. <laughs> yeah. String puppets. Yeah. Um yeah, I couldn't I couldn't control it. Did I ever tell you I, I when I went downhill skiing? Like for the first time in high school, 
I never did it before, but you know, you're wrestling and trying to lose weight. So you'd, you know, I'd leave the house and I didn't want to be home because I didn't want to eat, but it's also burning calories. Mm -hmm. So that night I went skiing, I broke both my thumbs because you have your, your you know, you have the ski poles and I had the loops in them. Yeah. Well, the fuck I'm doing. So I kept falling uh -huh. and I broke both my thumbs. Oh my God. Yeah. So I was like this. <laughs> <laughs> you could, you could, how did you wipe your ass? <laughs> I didn't. It's amazing how disabled I, I still, you are I, I, without I, I, a thumb. I still haven't done to this day. Isn't that amazing? What? With how disabled you are without a thumb. Well, yeah, I mean, shit's made. If we, if we didn't have thumbs your hands ever, your shit. yeah, but if we didn't have thumbs ever, the fucking, the scientists would figure out ways to make shit without thumbs. We would, we would evolve. The evolution will take over. Yeah, like instead, they have a glass like this. Probably with like a finger hole in it. Our, our fingers would probably grow longer. Do you know that? It wouldn't be a thumbs up anymore. Like, <laughs> It'll be like, <laughs> be index finger up. Did you know that elephants' tusks uh, are now growing shorter to be less desirable? Because elephants with longer tusks would be targeted Harvested, yeah. to, to be killed and with evolution, it kind of like a, their hormones the or whatever ivory. adjust. Yeah, like they don't grow long tusks yeah, anymore. But, so, but that also fucks up because their tusks is is a tool for defense. Well, right, but I, I don't. I mean, that still so, wouldn't uh, fuck with an elephant. Defense against what though? Like um, big cats, like yeah, but the big, a big cats never, never going to attack you if it's going it's going to eat your ass, like you and I. What? <laughs> Don't they, they, they chase you from behind and then they get up on you and they jump on your back and they claw the fuck out of you and they, they work up towards your neck. Well, if you're by yourself, but elephants usually work together and they travel. So big cats would go up after like baby elephants. Hmm. So, but, but baby elephants wouldn't have tusks. They wouldn't. So the, the, the adult elephants with tusks will be the ones defending them. Do male and females both have tusks? That's a good question. Yeah, I don't know. I don't but it's know. interesting, like, so, I mean, this is how evolution works, right? Uh, but excuse me. How, how does elephant uh, DNA or whatever it is causing them to grow the evolution, causing them to grow the smaller tusk? How does the tusk know that the elephant is being harvested for its tusks? Like, how, 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 does, how does it... I'm having a tough maybe, time here. <laughs> maybe... What 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 happening is, and and I'm full you're gonna of, fucking I'm full of shit here right now. Yeah. I'm just making stuff up, trying to sound smart. <laughs> but when when elephants witness the the murders, right, mm -hmm. not the the killing, um, it kind of like imprints in their memory, so they try to fight against that. So maybe if they understand, the elephants with larger tusks get killed, that they try not to somehow they can hold back the, the growth of the tusks. I, I don't think know. You, I think you read this article in Playboy. <laughs> I'm making... <laughs> <laughs> I think... Playgirl, it's probably Playgirl. I, I think my facts are correct. I mean, yeah, I, 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 I get it. There's, I mean, all, all evolution or, you know, we have... Don't they say we have gills in, like, the uh, vaginal cocoon that we're in? Don't, don't like, don't, like... Babies start off with gills or something like that, or they used to have gills or something. What? I, look, no, no. I, I am not making shit. I just heard these. I hear a lot of weird shit, so it's probably not true. That's but not I true. thought I thought that is what happened. Because like, how does a how does a baby breathe in the womb? Not, through the umbilical cord. It, it gets blood. Can you breathe and oxygen, from a dick hole? Like how does that? What is, how does that work? And blood, oxygen, food, like minerals, it eats everything. So comes you can breathe umbilical. Cord. Like if I'm dying, I was like, Roman, give me your belly button so I could take a breath of fucking air. Yeah, you would you like to do that now? I gotta work through the fucking forest. Next time we're underwater in the pool, you <laughs> breathe through my belly button. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I no, just don't know. But, but I thought they said we had how... gills or something. Like we've evolved from that. Like not, mm. not now. Because all the amniotic fluid I see is just like baby piss, right? So we did hear about the, the alligators, right? How they can. Uh, yeah, alligators can, can survive in, in cold weather, they can go completely. frozen. They can, they can freeze themselves. They can be completely frozen as long as their nostrils are out so they can breathe. Yeah. But I, I can't remember what he said the duration was. Like, 
Was it like weeks I or like an hour? I don't know. I don't think he mentioned the duration because what I did is I brought up if uh, they have problems with py python in um, a high station. Yeah, population because Florida Everglades has high population of pythons and they're killing a lot of animals. So it's a big problem. But Everglades is, is protected land and they're not, you're not allowed to hunt unless right, you have so a no license. Right, so there's no population control. So they keep, they keep acknowledging that it's a problem down there, but they don't want to change any rules to allow people to hunt them. Right. You know? So what happens is they just continue to grow. And there was a guy on Joe Rogan's show. He hunts them. Who's Joe and, Rogan? Probably like just another podcast that's along the way. Yeah, some guy just started just, podcasting. <laughs> <laughs> and um, he was talking about how important it is to find the nest so that you can get the eggs. Because the eggs are in like hundreds. I remember this number. The alligator, so, sorry, are you done? I don't want to interrupt. Yeah, go ahead. So, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> so, um, real quick. <laughs> I mean, people, I don't think, listen to us for alligator fucking history, but... So uh, an alligator, apparently the, the gender is dependent on the first 30 days and whether the temperature averages over 70 or 80. If it's over 91 degrees, it's going to be a male. For 30 days or something, right? It's yeah. going to be a male. If it's below, it's going to be female. Yeah, that's how it's done. And they know how to like balance it. And the female, so they can live to be, some of them can live to be 75, 100 years old, <sighs> but they say typically on 50 years old but they also lay 100 eggs a year. And, but yes. the survival rate of the eggs is only 50%. But so basically over 50 mm -hmm. years, this one female alligator can have 2,500 kids, mm -hmm. babies. Kids. <laughs> <laughs> this fucking childcare bill. Mommy. Yeah, and then once they get to three foot, it's like automatically sort of let go into the water or whatever. whatever. Well, no, if, if you have one in captivity, after three years, because they grow a foot a year. Mm -hmm. After three years, it's best to let them let them go. But when the mama, I don't know how big the alligator gets, but when the mama lets the alligator go into the water on its own, that is basically like, fuck off, you're on your own, like you're out of the house, like I'm yeah, not helping you college. anymore. You're going to college, yeah. figure your shit out. Well, <laughs> I know people go to college and still figure their shit out. <laughs> but anyway, it's, pretty, it's just pretty cool to hear about yeah. that, like, you know, um, yeah, so that's, you're welcome for that guy, people. <laughs> Something we learned on our trip. Man, I've been holding that so, now. I can save that space in my brain get out of there. <laughs> <laughs> Highlight, delete. <laughs> Fuck. What else did we do? Oh, I got to read about this brewery. Oh, yeah, sorry. So um, they were in a, um, they, they, they had a half pipe. So anyway, Zach started home brewing initially as an investigation into the brewing process after being exposed to exceptional craft beer, which is what we're doing, Ellie. Mm -hmm. I don't I don't know. We're being exposed right now. I'm ex gonna expose my fucking sneaky pickle to you. <laughs> but I don't know the last time we had a production, like a, 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 a big production brewery beer in the last year since we started this. The only, the closest one would be Yingling. Right. But definitely but not still Budweiser, kind of, Miller, Coors. No, no, like no. That. Yeah. But, it's surprising me because Sam Adams and Yingling are still under craft beer mm -hmm. category. So I don't understand. Yeah, I, I, there's a there's a there's a reason. For, uh, obviously, there's a reason for that. I can't remember what it is, but like, like I mean, the other thing is all big circle jerk. Like Budweiser is fucking InBev, and Miller is owned by, I think, some Canadian company, maybe Molson. Molson, I think so. I used to drink Molson. I don't know. Miller is owned by someone. Coors is owned by someone. Uh, Coors is owned by, maybe Coors is owned by Molson. But either way, um, get back to this. Sure. So after he was exposed to exceptional craft beer, he soon set out to make beers that were just as excellent as those that had first been inspired by him. Um, the Corova Milk Porter and Hopopotamus IPA, two of Gnarly Barley's homebrews, had their festival premiere in New Orleans in 2011 uh, at the Tap Beer Festival. Zach and Carrie, I hope it's Carrie, maybe it's Kari, 
set out to create a craft brewery after receiving positive feedback through local beer festivals and making many friends in the local brewing community. In 2014, their vision was realized in a 14,000 square foot facility in uh, Hammond, Louisiana, which I don't know how far that is from us, but we won't have time to go there. But just to finish up here, this guy's got a killer beard, by the way. Um, we can do a watch this one. There's his beard. <laughs> Why? That's his beard. I was just showing a picture of his beard. Oh, nice. See? I'm pretty fucking good at this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, Gnarly Barley was the recipient of a 2017 Louisiana Lantern Award for demonstrating excellence in manufacturing and outstanding service to their community. The Brewers Association named Gnarly Barley among the top 50 fastest growing craft breweries in 2017 and 2018. Current distribution in South Louisiana includes the North Shore, Greater New Orleans area, Baton Rouge, Lafayette, Huma, Lake Charles, and Alexandria. Gnarly Barley was recently named the 2023 Louis Award winner for Louisiana Attraction of the Year. But, so I apologize if I'm saying carry or carry wrong. I'm saying it one of those ways correctly. <laughs> That's okay. Before we... Before we left town to come to New Orleans, I've noticed that the Budweiser plant yeah. was having protests. They're outside. striking. They're striking. Yeah. Yep. Or so, they were practice strikes. I don't know if they're real strikes now. No, I think it, the union workers are striking for new contracts. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't have the details. Um, When's the last time there was a craft brewery fucking? Uh, strike. That's strike. Yeah, that's right. Um, right. Do we know what this is for ABV? You said. Yeah, I said it was four point two. Yeah, that's what I thought you said. I just wanted to know if you remember. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's um, we're we're still we're still here, uh, recording this. We got another couple of days left here. We're gonna meet with someone else. Yeah, we're meeting with someone to do another recording. Um. That'll probably be a Patreon episode. That'll maybe? be Patreon for a little while, yeah, before it be on YouTube again. But uh, um, your sub your subscriptions uh, help to 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 go out and, and and meet with people and meet with brewery owners and um, be able to record new content, new stories, expose more breweries, craft breweries, obviously, and. Um, that's what kind of helps mm -hmm. us to come out and, and continue to. Well, in all this exposure, we've got really, um, I mean, not as many as someone like Dave Portnoy or yeah. someone at Barstool Sports, but I, he was, I think he saw, he's got like rooms full of shit that people send him. But we've had people reaching out to us and people we've reached out to that are going to be sending us stuff to review, yeah. um, not, we're, just, not just beer. So, we're, we're getting there. Yep. Yeah, it's nice yeah. to see that kind of grow and we appreciate you guys. Helping us with that and and, and, and the stuff we're getting it. is if it's not beer, it's from companies that are U.S. made companies. Mm -hmm. uh, we're not we're not we don't do like product <laughs> reviews for just any website yeah. or any company. Um, it's it's specifically tailored to U.S. made products, small businesses, local, veteran owned, women owned, you know, minority owned, whatever. But small it has business, to be. Yeah local uh has to be u.s uh u.s businesses mm -hmm. so but yeah we we are also getting beers and we got coffee like coming coffee yeah. coming yeah, yeah. which so. are actually pretty I, I like those things because it's usually the day after a you know a live or something we did on instagram or something like that that you know it's early morning we don't want to well roman can't handle a beer i i would do it but i'm a supportive co-host <laughs> <laughs> so, like, <laughs> so i will Start with coffee. <laughs> he's, he's supporting me, so he'd rather have the coffee than, than the beer. But That's no, I, I like it. I mean, weather's been great here. It's uh, mid uh, mid to upper 60s today, and I think it's supposed to be mid to upper 70s tomorrow. So we're, we said we're going to go meet with someone tomorrow. Um, maybe there's another chance for a brewery visit after that. Who knows? 
And uh, we want to thank all the listeners who have been following us on Instagram that's been uh, helping us with um, increasing our fo followers. Um, we want to thank all everyone who is following us on Patreon. It's, it's not a large fee, it's just five bucks a month. But if we have enough of you subscribing, they can help us more with, with these trips, with content creation and uh, um, be able to talk to more breweries and, 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 and schedule these interviews so we can cre uh, create more content. And um, we have large following on um, a large following around the world. We have a lot of people in Europe who has been following us for, I think, since the beginning. Like there's some people who listen to us in Belgium and, and in England since we started. So thank you to you guys. But there, there are listeners around the world, not just Europe, but Australia, Asia. All over. Uh, really. South America. Yeah. Everyone who is following and listening to us. Spread the word, it, it, it really helps, we, we appreciate it. So we want to thank subscribers, our Instagram followers, and our listeners around the world uh, who has been listening. Um, we appreciate you guys. And uh, don't forget, if you live in New York State uh, and you go on to drinknycraft.com, use discount code Bruce and Banter. At checkout, you get 10% off your order. Um, and that's only for New York State residents. Um, and then uh, I think that's it. So we want to take this time to say huge thank you. And until next time, this is 50th episode. And then we'll do something more special, um, episode 100. And we have the giveaway on Instagram once we reach 3,000 followers. I think we're doing good now, and we'll keep plugging along. And we got we got big things planned. Like Roman said, it's a it's a little exhausting today because we've we've been at that all day. When when you're here, you you, you know. So cheers, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Hey, hopheads. Frank here, and Roman. Welcome to Bruise and Banter, the podcast where we sip and spill the funniest stories over a cold one. We're not just brewing laughs and comedy. We also discuss life stories and current events in every episode. Follow The Frolic on our socials, where we brew up more than just banter. Check out linktree forward slash brews and banter for all the goods. And guess what? We've got a VIP section. Join our Patreon for exclusive content, behind the scenes brew secrets, and maybe even a blooper reel or two. Subscribe, laugh, and unlock the full brews and banter experience. Because life is too short for bad beer and boring stories. Cheers. Cheers.